Let's talk about bootstrapping a node. This is the operation that is really critical for you to understand if you're adding capacity to your system. So bootstrapping is what we call adding capacity, adding a node to the system. How does it work? This is one of my favorite features of Cassandra because back in the day when I ran relational systems, if I needed to do any upgrades, it meant downtime. Bootstrapping doesn't mean any downtime and that is magical. Bootstrapping is a new node joining the cluster. How does it work? Kind of cool actually, because it's a very orderly process and it's one that you can watch in the logs if you wanted to. So a joining node contacts that seed node. This is the first part of this. So when it connects, it says, hey world, I wanna know what's going on. In your configuration file, when you put in seed nodes, what you're doing is you're telling that node where to find running information about the cluster. So when it starts up, it connects to the cluster, says, hey, this is me, how are you doing cluster? The cluster recognizes, okay, you have the right configuration. That's when the real fun starts. The cluster starts rearranging itself to make room for this new node. The token ranges are now rearranged to fit the new token range for that node and or many nodes if you're using vnodes. And then at that point, you're just moving data into or out of other nodes. This is a operation that happens runtime. You do not need to bring down anything to make it happen. And it is pretty cool to watch because what you get at the end is a running system that incrementally grows without any downtime. So how do we do this? Bootstrapping a node is pretty simple. So what you're doing is you're changing the YAML file, the Cassandra.yaml file on the node you're gonna to add to the system. In there, you're gonna point out the seed nodes, running nodes inside of the running cluster, and give it the cluster name. Those are the most basic things. Of course, the other configuration values need to be there, but the cluster name and the seed nodes need to match up with what's running already in the cluster. So the YAML file stores things like cluster name, native transport address, list and address, seeds. Those are all mandatory for getting the node going, but that, like I said, that seed node is really important because that is where it's at. Important thing about seed nodes, and this is a confusion that happens a lot. Seed nodes are not master nodes or specially designated or anything like that. Seed nodes are just running nodes that you happen to designate. You could designate any node in the system as a seed node. It just has to be running when you start up. Seed nodes don't even have to have all the same nodes. They can all be different. So the seed node is not that super special. Just keep in mind, it has to be running something, running in the cluster that it can contact when it starts up. So what happens when something fails? Bad things happen, it didn't start up. Not to worry, you can recover from this. So if it couldn't connect to the cluster, that's an easy one because that just means that it didn't start. The not starting, you can recover from pretty quickly. You look at the reason why, most likely it has something to do with communication, maybe didn't get the cluster information right, something very basic. So that's an easy one to troubleshoot. Look at the logs, it'll probably give you a clear indication. The harder one to do is whenever it started and it got killed halfway through. Not good. Now that means we have this node in sort of a halfway state, meaning that it has joined the cluster, it is not currently running, it is in a joining state, and half of the data is there. How do we get past that? The first thing to try is just restarting the node, and that should usually get it going. If it doesn't, delete all the data, try to restart the node again. If that fails, you need to start diagnosing what happened in that bootstrap process. After you bootstrap a node, there's a process called node tool cleanup. Node tool cleanup is run on every other node in the system. So node tool cleanup's job is to look at all the SS tables on that running node and find out if that data actually pertains to that node. Now, when you bootstrap a new node into the cluster, the token ranges are gonna change. And those token ranges are really important for that node for replication, et cetera. Well, if you start moving token ranges, so you add a new node, there's gonna be some data stored on that local node that is no longer valid for that node. Node tool cleanup reads all the SS tables and discards any data that is no longer valid. This is a good way to keep your disk space in check and just keep the system healthy and clean. So how does this work? Well, it's pretty much a compaction process without the actual compaction. It will read the SS table and then write out another SS table in the process. But what it's doing is just doing a simple comparison. It looks at the partition keys and says, is this the partition key that belongs to this node? If not, throws it out. If it is, it puts it in the SS table. Very simple. To run node tool cleanup, that is a node tool command, very simple. 
you can see some of the commands here. You're running cleanup on a key space or a table even. Most time you're gonna run node tool cleanup if you're bootstrapping a new node into the cluster because you now have a lot of information in the system. It's all over the place. Every node's gonna need it. Run it on the entire system. Hopefully this is good information for you to know when you go to bootstrap a node. Give it a try, it's really not that hard.